I get a lot of flack from folks thinking that I have a bias towards John Deere. And really, where does that come from? I have no idea what they're talking about. I mean, just because there's a sea of green around here, because I have the signs, because I have the attachments, what? I mean, I feel like that's unfair. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have plenty of orange around here too, guys. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four Kubota tractors for sale right now. So I don't bleed green, I don't bleed orange. Well, maybe I bleed a little bit of both, you know? But uh, today, I'm gonna tell you the things that John Deere screwed up on, on various models that they have out right now or they've had out very recently. I'm gonna tell you the things that they got wrong, what they need to fix on the next generation. I do wanna give credit where credit is due, so I'm gonna make sure to point out a few features as well that they have fixed or improved over the years, and I'll let you know about those as well. Hey, and you know the drill. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button below. It's right underneath there, completely free. Make sure you read the description as well. A lot of links in there. Go to my Amazon store, to my website. Lots of good attachments, accessories. I can help you with a tractor, with an attachment, put together a whole package, help with delivery and financing too. I had to get down on ground level for this one, but I'm telling you, you know, these manufacturers don't think enough about underbody protection, okay? Skid plates of some kind, you know, routing things, hoses, wires, lines, all that stuff in appropriate manners. And I, well, I think they give it some thought, okay? I just think that they could do better or at least offer perhaps like an off-road kit, you know? But let me show you what I'm talking about. I mean, so take a look. So this is the bottom side. So just imagine you're in the woods and the field, everything else. This is not really, I guess, just not John Deere. This is uh, all manufacturers in general. But there's just stuff hanging down, you know, and, and this is as high up as the auto connect linkage goes. You can take it off. If you weren't going to use the mower deck, like I'm actually not going to, so maybe I could just take this off and uh, protect that linkage even more. But let me show you something here. I got to really squeeze underneath. And it might be hard to see, but I actually put a little hole right in that hydraulic filter there. So there's, uh, I noticed just the other day, a couple tiny little drips and it was like, what is that from? So when I was out in the woods, I don't know, last week, whenever it was there, ended up puncturing a hole in there somehow, I'm not even sure how, but this is the kind of stuff that can happen, okay? One thing I was thinking about doing maybe was having a skid plate made up and it would attach like the mower deck would to this rear linkage here and then to the front hanger arms that are way up there. And then it would just attach and cover everything that's underneath here. I don't know if that's practical or not. Any thoughts? I tell you, for being such an innovative company, John Deere sure makes some interesting decisions sometimes. I think another big opportunity that was missed by John Deere was not offering a factory cab on the Redesign 2 Series. You know, again, their main competition here is the Kubota B Series, okay? And guess what? The Kubota B Series has a factory cab option with air conditioning and heat, you know, right from the factory, radio, all that kind of stuff. They're just beautiful machines, and I am looking pretty hard right now at getting a, a, one of those new LX, either the, the 3310 or the whatever the 26 horsepower version of that is, but I really love that series there, and I kind of like getting the latest and greatest of something and trying it out and showing you guys what it is too. So that's on my list, and you know what? I would consider one of these, except I want a cab, a factory cab with air conditioning, not just heat. And you can't get that on the 2038, the 2032, the 2025, none of those two series. And for that instance, you also can't get it on the John Deere 1 series either. I mean, nothing until you get up to the 3R series is available with that factory cab. And yeah, I, I know, I mean, perhaps there's some sort of, um, I don't know, engine requirement or something else to be able to support the air conditioning. However, I feel like Kubota found a way to do that with their 26 horsepower variant on the B2650. So, you know, maybe this is a smaller frame size, but it's still the same approximate engine size, right? I mean, it's pretty close. I, I, I'm not an engineer. I don't want to pretend that I am. I just feel like, hey, let's get some innovation going on here, open up some more uh, market opportunities and uh, give customers available options. So I just feel like it's a misstep by John Deere. They got to figure out something there, at least on that two series with the factory cab option. Maybe they have something in the works. One of the big gripes for me is the fact that where the heck are you supposed to tie these things down at when you tie it down to the trailer? The tie down points are almost non-existent on the front end of the tractor. I mean, you gotta make do, you gotta kinda weave and wind your way through the axles or the front frame or underneath the loader and all that other kind of jazz there. You know, the backside's a little bit easier, but still, 
It can depend on the model, you know, where you're going to tie off to. There's no just like natural positions, natural locations to tie off on a lot of these tractors, and it blows my mind. I mean, same can be said, again, this is a two series right here, an older style. There's just not great tie off points. You get back here and you can see one spot on one side where perhaps that's a good spot, but that's it. That's just one location there, you know, and this is the redesigned series. Again, we're taking a look down here. I mean, you gotta weave and wind your way in there somewhere and it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Give us some hooks or some locations there where we can tie onto. It just makes life a lot easier. Now, once you get up to the four series, for instance, like this 40, what is this, a 4052M, you can see it right here and you got another one. You can see right there as well. Okay, good tie down points on the back. I use those a lot. And then interestingly enough, I don't even know if this is what it's for. I guess maybe the manual will tell me, but there's one right here. But if you look close on the other side, there isn't one. <laughs> there's not one over there. There's just one on this side. Why the heck isn't there one on the other side? Come on guys, get it together. You know, maybe it's a bigger deal to me because I am trailering tractors all the time. So it's just a pain in the butt. Every tractor is different. Where to figure out how to tie it down, that kind of thing. You know, that's my trailer over there. The one I'm using all the time. It just is, it's frustrating, you know? So perhaps it sticks out more to me because I am doing it on a constant basis. I don't think I'm alone in that though. You know, one of the other big gripes that I have and that I think a lot of other folks have are the fact that these don't come standard with LED lights. I mean, is it 1920? I mean, <laughs> what year are we in right now, you know? One of the cool things, from what I've read, that new Kubota LX3310, that, that LX series there, is coming standard with the LED lights on there. I couldn't tell for sure, but perhaps the, uh, the new 4M Heavy Duty series is as well. Check out Tractor Time with Tim's video on that. That's a pretty sweet machine also. Um, it looked like maybe it was a, a part of a standard package that was on there, but I haven't looked in, in too much detail. Still, these manufacturers need to get with the times. Make that stuff standard equipment. I have the same complaint about my trucks. You know, I've got the halogens on my 2017 F250. I do have the LEDs on the, uh, the 2018 F350, but still, it's not standard equipment. Yeah, there's a downside to LEDs, right? I mean, on my way back from my hunting trip in Montana, you know, snow and sleet and everything else, and those headlights just got covered in ice, you know, and visibility got harder and harder. You had to get out, clean them off because there's just not that heat generated to melt off the ice buildup that's on there. However, I'll take that visibility, that increased visibility you get with LEDs for the other 99% of the time that I'm using them anyways, and same thing on a tractor. So fortunately, you can update the bulbs at least to get LEDs, and I have done so. I've made some videos all about that. You can update the bulbs in these lights to change them to LEDs very easily. Um, the same thing with the fender lights that are on here on all the different John Deere models, some Kubota models as well. So make sure you check out my Amazon store because I do have a lot of information on that. What you're staring at here is the classic style of John Deere 2025R. Believe it or not, there's two different versions of the 2025R, and they're completely different. So typically when you think of a redesign, when you're thinking of the same model, think of a vehicle, you know, like an F-150 or something. Typically what they're doing, they're improving all the specs all around the board, you know, the capabilities of it, the features, the comfort, you know, the engine size, the torque, all that kind of stuff, right? Well, one of the confusing things that John Deere did, yeah, they improved the layout of it, the operator station, that kind of thing, but they went from taking a two series loader like this H-130 that's right here, and they downgraded it to the loader that's on the John Deere 1025R, the subcompact. So if you're thinking what I'm thinking, how does that make sense? You know, clearly they were trying to fill some sort of a market void. You know, I, I'm not gonna say it's not a nice tractor because I think that it, it's nice, but understanding what it is, what it used to be, and it's provided a lot of frustration. I've had a lot of phone calls from folks looking to trade those back in because they are very, um, unsatisfied with the with the small loader capability you know if they wanted a subcompact capability they'd go get a 1025R. I know some of you love your 2025Rs the new style the redesigned version of it and that's fine because hopefully you went into it understanding what it was however it provides a lot of confusion it creates chaos and, and, and misunderstanding and potential uh, bad feelings between the customer and the dealer or the manufacturer which certainly could have been avoided if they would have handled this whole thing a little bit differently. So in my opinion, that's a pretty big mistake that John Deere made. Guys, so John Deere knocked this one out of the park, actually, when they redesigned it. This is a John Deere 2032R. You can also get it in the 2038 variant as well. You know, it used to be a very old school, kind of just utility type tractor, and they really took it to the next level uh, by completely updating the operator station, some aesthetics, some other things as well. 
uh, brought it on par with the 1025R, okay, which was kind of the signature tractor there in the subcompact world. One of the huge mistakes that they did that they missed out on, in my opinion, and I don't think I'm alone in this, they stuck with a high-low range hydrostatic transmission. You know, Kubota, the competition, you know, in the two series here, the B series from Kubota, is gonna have that third range, the medium range, so you have high, medium, low. I use that medium range all the time, you know, in my larger tractor, and in, in any tractor actually that I have equipped with the third range, I find myself right in medium almost all the time. There's certain applications where you want high or low, but I tell you, I live in that medium range. If you're not familiar with the hydrostatic range select, let me show you what I mean really quick. So essentially every subcompact and compact tractor anymore are gonna have this range lever right here, okay? So you have high, neutral, and low. Again, if it has a three range, it's gonna have high, medium, and low, and maybe a neutral in between each of the ranges there. Doesn't matter if it's gear or hydrostatic either. So um, this is what I'm talking about. You've got low, you've got high, no medium. I think it's a big miss on the redesign of the two series. You know, one of the other big things that I think is a screw up by John Deere is the fact that uh, they kind of shot themselves in the foot. What they should have done is allowed operators to have choices of different seats. They do so on like the X7 series garden tractors. They do so on a, a couple of select models or series. However, for the most part, most models and series are gonna be stuck with one seat. And so we're taking a look at an older one here. This was a, uh, a classic style 2025R, but you can see there is virtually no suspension there. You've got these little rubber stoppers right here and that's it, okay? No upgrade for a suspension seat of any kind or an air ride seat or armrests, anything like that on there. You know, I feel like John Deere just in and of itself was missing a sales opportunity to make more money, let alone give the operator a potential uh, better experience using the tractor. Here's another one, for, for example, right here. This is a John Deere uh, 4M series, okay? And so again, you're gonna have that same style of seat right there. You can see very little suspension. You've got these uh, couple little springs right here, but um, you do have provisions. It might be hard to see there, but you've got provisions, holes right here where you could potentially add on an armrest kit. I think you'd have to do so after the fact though, because this is not um, something I've ever found from John Deere, but Take a look, uh, look at maybe Seat Warehouse or some other place like that, Milsco, something like that, um, who's a seat manufacturer that I think John Deere gets their seats from. You may be able to do something about that. So even here, for instance, on this deluxe tractor, okay, this redesigned 2R series, now this is a good seat, okay? It's a good seat option to have if you're only gonna have one. It's got a good suspension on there. You can see the suspension right down there. It's, it's, it's very nice, okay, don't get me wrong, still, why is an air ride seat not an option? I feel like they could have increased again their sales, given folks more options, which are always good. People always want options, but uh, would have been pretty easy to integrate and, and make available for customers. And just so you can see, this is an air ride seat right here. Now this is a cab version, but they make a vinyl version uh, for the open station tractors. But air ride seat here, you simply have a knob where you can push in put and pull it out to increase or decrease the uh, the air pressure in there and so if I pull out or let's, let's just push in you can hear that um, the pump cycle on okay and then okay so just like that nice option to have not everybody wants it but why not make it an option big mistake in my opinion you know again in the land of missed opportunity I think John Deere screwed up by not offering additional options for like these sway buckles down here, okay? Now this is a very common style that is found on, uh, let's see, the value series really, if you think about it, the 4Ms, the 3Es, but then also the premium series, okay? On the 1R, so the 1025Rs, and the, and the 2Rs, so the 2025s, and 2032s, 2038s, all that stuff. This is what you find on here, the turnstile buckle on here. Very rudimentary, basic system, but not what you expect, and at least, at the very least, give customers an option to upgrade to the more premium series that's a lot easier to handle and use. Hey, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is it right here, okay? So this is a style here where you just pull out this pin. Now I've got um, it attached to a quick hitch right now and a ballast box, so I'm not gonna go ahead and pull it out. But uh, you pull this pin out here, and then you can see you have this outer um, tube and then the inner tube here, and they just slide over top of each other, allow complete flexibility of both of these lower arms. They're both set up that same way there, okay? You can see that one right there. And just makes it so much easier. Why that can't be an option, they're just missing out on a sales opportunity, and you know, it really, on some of these models, should be standard.
So one of the things I can't figure out with either Kubota, John Deere, any tractor manufacturer on the planet is why we couldn't have, you know, the accelerator pedal on the right hand side like we do in the vehicles that we've driven for eternity. Um, you know, I just feel like at least if this pedal right here on the right hand side, you push down on it, you go forward, I feel like we'd really be getting somewhere with things. You know, and sure, yeah, this pedal would still be actually going backwards, it wouldn't be the brake, but at least part of this configuration would be correct, you know. Kubota has their treadle pedal, so you have a heel toe to go forwards and backwards. Um, John Deere has a twin touch, okay, so two side-by-side -side pedals, sort of similar to a vehicle, you know, but this is the one that goes forward, and then you step on this one to go backwards. So that's, you know, just opposite of what we're even used to. Um, anyways. I just feel like it's it's stupid. Like, why can't we just put the go forward pedal here, reverse over here? I don't know. Is it just me? You know, so one of the things that actually just drives me nuts is the fact that there is no piston assist to keep this door propped open on the three series, the four series cabs. It drives me nuts. I mean, give me a break. At least give folks an option to add that on. But Kubota has it. Come on, John Deere, get with the program. If you want to at least get on the same level as Kubota, get yourselves a little piston assist on this side door here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I open it up. Will it stay open? Nope. Wants to close every time. Open up and close. Annoying. You know, at least the driver's side has it. I don't know if you can see that, that mirror's in the way or not. Get these mirrors in my Amazon store, okay? Mirrors in the Amazon store, they go on any of these loader assemblies here, open station, cabs, doesn't matter. They're really nice. But you can see that piston right here, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Let me show you this Kubota here really quick. I'll show you the difference. See that? Boom, okay? Both sides. Get the pistons on both sides. You can see it there on the other side too. All right, big time difference. This is a 2010. Ain't like it's rocket science. Get it done, John Deere. Now, like I said, I want to give credit where credit is due. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a little list now of improvements they've made that they used to not have. They've implemented them now. We're making progress. You know, the 1025R now at least offers a radial tire, okay? These are gonna be those Versaturfs. Love these tires here. I think they're fantastic. The only radial option uh, offered by John Deere on the one series, okay? I used to at least um, kinda, kinda beg for these HDAP tires, okay? These tires down here, this trip pattern. They are still biased, but this is your traditional R4 pattern you see right here. Um, these HDAP series seem a lot on garden tractors, but same size as the X7 series in John Deere. They work really well. You know, you can get these on Amazon uh, for a pretty reasonable price if you want to. Here's a look at, at some front tires stacked up. Again, you got the HDAPs down there, heavy duty all purpose, what that stands for. R4s here, which are the really common industrial style that you see. And then the new Carlisle Versaturfs, pretty slick. So John Deere did also switch from having one seat that rotated around and swiveled around for their backhoe and had it just reversed back here when you're going to sit on the backhoe like, uh, like the Kubota does. You know, you have the one seat, you flip it around, and then use the backhoe that way. They do now have a totally separate seat here for the backhoe. You can see it right here. When you take the backhoe off, it's just going to stay with the, the backhoe unit itself and then uh, good to go. But I like this setup a lot better. Good job, John Deere. Another good improvement by John Deere is actually these little yellow uh, pins right here. Okay, you see one here. You see one over there on the other side as well. And what this means is these side panels now, it's a toolless removal, okay? No tools, no uh, socket or wrench or anything. It used to be um, you had a, a bolt and a nut on the back side. You had to get your stuff out and, and then undo that and take these side panels off. So now, simply what you do is you just turn part way, kind of show you there, see the back side, and boom, pulls right out, okay? And then put it back in, turn, and it's locked in place. Easy as that. One of the great things that John Deere has done is getting rid of the pinned on bucket. It's no longer even an option, okay? You're gonna get the quick attach standard equipment with the loader, okay? If you get the loader, you get a quick attach bucket. Fantastic, they used to have a version, the D120 loader for instance, that was pinned on here, meant you couldn't put on something like a brush crusher right here, or pallet forks, or a snow pusher, or whatever else, you know what I mean? So now you have that versatility no matter what you do. You can't screw it up that way. Uh, good job, John Deere. So I don't want you to confuse this with being a factory option because this is not. This is actually an electric control for an electric grapple I sell by WorkSaver. But the point being, John Deere now offers an integrated third function control kit for the John Deere 1 Series, okay? Long overdue. So you can add that on, then you can add on a hydraulic grapple on here. That being said, 
it's not cheap, you know? So there's other options out there. And so no, it's not standard equipment, but at least it's an available option, which believe it or not, for the first, what, eight, nine years of the 1025 hour production, it was not even an available option. You had to go aftermarket entirely. So yes, very expensive, but nice to have that available on a premium series. It should have been available a long time ago, but at least it is now. Good job, John Deere. Man, one other gripe I have about these smaller tractors like the 1025 hour, is the fact that there's no drawbar on here. You know, you got that little hitch plate there. I guess you can use that and put a ball on there, that kind of thing, but there's no drawbar on here. So what I'm gonna do is put one of these heavy hitch receivers on the back of my 1025R. You simply remove that center flat black plate right there and re replace it with this green receiver hitch and uh, it should perform a little bit better that way, at least for my intended purposes on it. But one of my gripes, especially these smaller tractors don't have the draw bars on there. At least it is an option on some of the bigger ones, although it's not standard equipment. So make sure you pay attention to that. Up until 2018, I think it was, the old style of 3E, so I'm talking about the 3032E, the 3030AE, and then, you know, eventually the 3025E came on board. John Deere did not allow those tractors, or they didn't design them, I should say, to be backhoe compatible. So when they did redesign and update that 3E series there in 2018, they allowed for backhoes to be used on there. So uh, good job, John Deere, making that improvement. That was a big miss originally on that tractor design. Well, that's my list there, guys. You know, I'm sure it differs from your guys' list, but those are the things that I think John Deere missed the boat on. They got wrong. They're doing wrong. Maybe they'll watch this and maybe they'll change. Do you think they will? <laughs> I don't either. But it's folks like you. You can share that with your dealers. Share that. Write it right into the to the manufacturer, you know, send it in to John Deere. Same thing with Kubota. You know, if you have gripes with any of these, you know, there's certain manufacturers that are more receptive to change than others, but they're still trying to integrate those changes in a way that is cost effective. You know, you want to provide a quality product with as many features and options as possible, or at least available. You got to do so at a reasonable price point. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. We'd love to have you join the party. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, leave a comment, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.